I'm sure everybody right now wants to drift to take a nap here. Anyway, um, I had a personal uh, experience with SI pain in, I remember in summer of 2002. Um, I was lucky enough because I was going to San Diego for a talk um, and attended a, a conference um, about um, os orthopedic medicine. Uh, I met a physical therapist there. His name is Richard uh, Don Tegney. And he actually fixed my joint, and I was pain-free. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but this gave me an vision to proceed with something called regenerative injection therapies that we're going to talk about in this uh, presentation. Uh, I'm going to, you know, um, skip some of these slides because our colle my colleagues uh, kind of discussed it before. Um, Sacroiliac anatomy, the innervation, uh, generally speaking, the, it's controversial. Uh, the dorsal aspect, L4 L, uh, to S3, and ventral aspect, L1 to L2. Um, again, we're trying to find some evidence-based medicine here. Uh, in the slide on the uh, right side here, uh, as a practitioner, you want to be this filter in the middle here. You want to gather the information, and then you want to process in your brain sort of before you proceed to use it in your clinical practice. I'm sure all of you guys are aware about this one here, quality of evidence. Um, as far as evidence-based medicine, you know, uh, the prevalence of SI is around 10 to 38 percent. And there's some evidence of using the comparative uh, controlled local anesthetic blocks, which means are uh, using uh, one time with short-acting local anesthetic and the other time with long-acting local anesthetic like lidocaine and bupivacaine. And there's some evidence of radiofrequency neurotic uh, in the treatment. Um, again, uh, I'm not going to go through all of this because it's been discussed before, uh, but it's kind of uh, one of these areas that uh, could be very conflicting because there's a lot of uh, referral patterns in this area. Uh, the diagnosis has been discussed before, um, but I just want to elaborate on the International Association Society of Pain uh, diagnose uh, criteria, sort of. So it's very simple. Pain in the SI joint, pain reproduced by clinical tests, selectively stressing the joint, and pain completely relieved by selective delivery of local anesthetic. As uh, sacroiliitis, the true as uh, sacroiliitis occurs mainly in rheumatic diseases such as ankylosing some spondylitis, psoriasis, and so forth. Uh, SI dysfunction is the commonest form that we see in our practice, but actually can turn also to an inflammation uh, in the SI. The differential diagnosis, I did so many SI injections in my life, I can tell you the ones that failed the injections, I usually send them to uh, physiotherapy to get an EMG. And most of them had S1, S1 radiculopathy. So always remember this. The SI pain can be S1 radiculopathy. This is the first thing to come in your mind. Besides, of course, you know, other myofascial pain syndromes and lumbar facet disease like L5S1 uh, lumbar facet. Okay? Some of the myofascial uh, diseases. This is Jeanette Travel, the guru of uh, my facial pain. She used to be a JFK uh, private doctor, she used to be a cardiologist, and she treated a lot of chest pains in the ER by injecting procaine in the chest wall. Uh, algorithm is a, is a word uh, developed by Khawarizmi, and um, he's uh, one of the uh, Islamic uh, scholars here that uh, came out with this technique. Um, as far as lumbar spine algorithm, uh, we have um, first uh, step one, which is conservative measures, followed by spinal injections, um, and in step three, surgical interventions. Um, as the other doctor was just mentioning, we're, as far as intervention, we're much more straightforward as far as, and more practical as far as dealing with the SI. So conservative measures, including education, physical therapy, SI, a belt, a dry needling, tens unit, analgesics. And this is uh, Richard Dontigny, the guy that fixed my SI joint. He's 
Uh, he spent like 45 years of his life just dealing with SI. He has a website, thelubeck.com. I encourage all of you uh, to go there. And I use a lot of his exercises. Actually, I have a video on the YouTube about how to do his exercises here. Uh, SI belt is very uh, nice uh, addition to uh, the exercises. Uh, TENS unit and acupuncture, we discussed uh, the TENS unit before, it works through the gate theory. This picture is for uh, Patrick Wall and Ronald Melzek. Uh, these guys won the Nobel Prize in 1965 for the gate theory. Acupuncture uh, works differently than TENS unit, it releases endorphins. Um, and I use a, a more contemporary type of uh, uh, technique developed by a guy named Felix Mann. He's a, a guru of uh, the British Acupuncture Society here. Um, you can do it without acupuncture needle. You can just use a spinal needle and just all you need to do is pack in the PSIS for a few seconds. And this will give you uh, uh, fantastic results. But just make sure that it's a kind of a, a dense treatment. So. I wouldn't use it first time with the patient. I would do superficial acupuncture, and then um, if the patient's tolerating the needling well, then you can proceed with that technique. Um, this is the acupuncture in uh, old days, how it looked like. Uh, spinal injections. Um, so first we have the, um, the most famous one, the SI with local anesthetic and steroids. And again, we use the double paradigm technique where we use one time with lidocaine, one time with bupivacaine, and this is give us more consistent results. Um, Sacroiliac injection with phenol, regenerative injection therapy, RF ablation and, uh, with cool RF and simplicity. So the SI injection, uh, straightforward, can be done with ultrasound or um, by uh, under fluoroscopy. And we usually inject the local anesthetic and the steroids in the lower one third where there's actual synovia joint. Um, this is just one study. Uh, uh, actually, this guy, I know him very well. The, 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 the study is uh, graduated from the same medical school. And basically, um, he used phenol uh, to inject the SI and had very uh, reasonable results. Myself, I use a concussion. He used phenol 6%. Uh, I use myself a concussion with a phenol and uh, bupivacaine and depomedrol to dilute the phenol 6% to 3%. And this will minimize the side effects of, um, it, God forbid, it, it went to the sacral roots, then you will have less um, you know, uh, side effects from this injection. Uh, also, I don't inject more than one cc because the volume of the local, uh, the volume of the joint is almost like one cc. So I don't put more than one cc inside the joint. Uh, cool RF uh, versus standard RF. Uh, so cool RF is a, a relatively a new technique where uh, you use uh, technology that helps with expanding the lesion. As you can see with the cool RF, the, it's a bigger lesion and you can denervate the nerves um, in the dorsum of the sacrum by, by doing that. Versus the standard RF, which can really doesn't, I mean, give you very reliable results with uh, in SI joint. Um, again, this is the cool RF, and these are the nerves that we ablate. Um, it's from a company called Kimberly and Clark. Uh, as you see, we, we ablate the med uh, media branch of L5, or actually it's the dorsal ramus of L5, and the lateral branches of S1 and 2 and 3. Uh, the guys from Neurotherm, they came out with a better device called Simplicity, uh, which is like a curved kind of probe that can give you both uh, bipolar and uh, monopolar uh, lesions. Um, and you can just place it next to the sacral foramina and you can just ablate the whole thing um, in one setting. Uh, regenerative injection therapy is a technique that I use extensively, developed by a guy named George Hackett from Cleveland, and he was a tra trauma surgeon. Um, and the, the whole idea about it is to inject something that stimulates the healing versus, in, you know, doing something that suppresses the inflammation. Uh, the commonest uh, agent that we use is the dextrose, and I use this concussion of uh, dextrose with lidocaine. Uh, and diluted with sterile water. 
and also we use uh, platelet-rich uh, plasma. Um, actually, we have a, a procedure on, on this Thursday for uh, PRP. Uh, both of these, they, they inflame the joint to, and it allows them to heal faster. Um, I think I, uh, I went too fast here. <laughs> but, okay, any questions? Uh, we like to leave the question at the end of the session, okay. so we like right. to call the last speaker at the moment. Okay. So, uh, I, I might just elaborate on this uh, platelet-rich plasma since I have like a few minutes here. So platelet-rich plasma uh, is basically a technique where you draw like 30 cc blood from the patient, you put it in a centrifuge machine, and you will get this few cc's that has all these growth factors. And basically it's the same technique uh, like injecting dextrose in the SI uh, ligament here. Uh, the difference between regenerative injection therapy and just a regular SI injection is when I do a regenerative injection therapy, also known as prolotherapy, by the way, uh, I inject the whole joint. I, uh, I do it periarticular. I inject the lower one-third and the upper two-third. And I, I, I infiltrate the whole uh, side because the idea is to strengthen these ligaments so the SI joint, you know, uh, kind of doesn't... Uh, uh, move out and actually reduces the inflammation quite a bit. Uh, I usually start with the simple injections of the dextrose because these are available in every hospital and so cheap to, to be done. And then um, I, if the patient having uh, good results but the pain is not, uh, I mean the pain comes back and uh, I do the PRP. So I, I do a set of like three uh, shots of dextrose and then I follow them with the PRP. This is my program that I've established uh, down the years here for regenerative injection therapy. Those patients that don't re uh, respond to uh, the prolotherapy, uh, I actually um, send them, as I said, to uh, get an EMG. And I, I'm telling you, I mean, 99% of these guys have S1 radiculopathy. And of course, this is a to totally different you know, treatment. Um, I think uh, kind of this kind of wrap it up quickly. So again, chronic low back pain is multifactorial in its generation and its generators of pain. Um, you need a, a, a good HMP followed by uh, the selected diagnostic imaging, physical therapy, and pharmacological management. Thank you so much. Okay.